All right, so we'll start from the beginning. Now I will not be putting anything together or taking anything apart in this video, but I will be giving you a good gist of how everything works and take you throughout the entire process. To start for the tools, they're on the left here. So all you need is a pair of tweezers, some pliers, any drill bit that is flat at the bottom to punch out the old primer and make it flat again, and something sharp to be able to pry out the anvil and the piece of paper, and also to scrape up with the powder from within the primer inside. What you want to do is organize all of your old primers. So what I did in this process, organize all of my same brand primers and the same type. So all my CCI regular primers are put together, all my federal primers are put together, all my CCI magnet primers are put together, and so on and so forth. Dude, now, after you do that, what you want to do is tumble them, let them dry obviously for a day or two, and then come back here. So when you take a primer from your case, this is what it's going to look like. So you can see there, this is what the primer looks like after you take it from a fired case and after you take the anvil out. Now you can see there's obviously a very noticeable dent in there. And what you want to do is just put that down on the surface. You want to put it underneath a coin so when you punch it out and flatten it, it is not a concave round underneath. If you put it on a metal coin, it'll stay flat. And you basically want to stick a drill bit, put it in there, hammer that a few times on the coin, take it out. And what you'll have left afterwards is a flat surface on the inside resembling something like that. This is a very important step. If you do not do this step, this might not work. So you want to make sure that this is flattened. And if you look on the back side, you don't have to worry too much about that dimple coming all the way out, but it's going to look something like that. When you fire your gun, different firing pins leave different markings. So some are bigger dimples. Some like these ones, you can see are smaller dimples. So essentially it'd be better to use one that has a smaller dimple as not too much stress would be causing the, cause the primer and it'd have less to flatten out so it'd be easier to flatten out. So I believe the smaller dimple is for my Savage Axis and the other one might be for my SKS potentially. After you do this step right here, the primer is now ready to be loaded and what you want to do is move on to the donor primer. Now this process works if the company is using the primers from use a hardened powder. This is what the hardened powder looks like right here. And that's the compound, if I can get it to focus. So that is a compound we're working with. And what we want to do is scrape that out and turn it into a powder form. So if you're using other primers, other companies, like CCI, I think is the same as this. But Federal might use a mushy compound. I think I tried to take one Federal primer apart. And the compound was a little bit mushy, so it depends what kind of primers you use. But when you're using Campro, this is what it looks like right here. And so the first step you want to do is take this primer here, the donor primer. You wanna use your pliers to grab the primer and then pop out the anvil. And you wanna save that anvil because we'll be reusing it. After you take out the anvil, you wanna take something to pry out the piece of paper. And we will also be reusing this paper. Now I did try this experiment with some different types of papers, so just regular paper like this and receipt paper and also paper from a packet of sugar, which is a bit thinner. I found that only this paper works. I think the, packet, the packeted sugar paper worked also, but I had three rounds with different types of paper and none of them worked. So I'm not too sure what kind of paper they use for this kind of paper right here, but you wanna be able to reuse this paper, so you wanna save them. Now these are large pistol magnum primers. So ideally what you wanna do is use large pistol primers. If you can use magnum primers because they do have a little bit more compound in there and this can give you more of a hotter load, and this load will be equivalent to a large magnum rifle primer. So if you can get some large uh, pistol primers, preferably large magnum. If you can't, I suppose you could use two pieces of paper from two small pistol primers, or two small rifle primers if you had to. But what you wanna do is make sure the paper is big enough to cover the whole area of the primer, because if you don't put anything there, and it's not gonna be hardened, it's gonna be a powder, so it will leak into the cartridge and into the powder if there's nothing to at least cover the holes where the anvil kind of leaves the, the primer open there. So for to look at this primer right here. So we want to make sure where all that red and pink is, there's something covering those areas because the compound is not going to be hardened and it will leak into the primer pocket or into the powder in the flash hole itself. So we want to make sure we have enough paper covering that. So if we were to use small pistol or small rifle primers, you might have to use two pieces of paper. Then again, that might be caught, that might cause some ignition problems if we were to layer the piece of paper on top of each other. So perhaps, you know, cut the paper or maneuver them in a way, or maneuver them in a way where it's not really overlapping each other. 
but still covering all the area that the anvil does not cover itself. After you take out the anvil and you take out the paper, you're gonna be left with a clean primer from the donor primer and you will not be needing these, but I do save them anyway. So that's what the primer is gonna look like. So you wanna make sure you scrape out as much stuff as you can from there and keep all the compound. Now in my personal experience, I don't want you to put all the compound into a large raffle primer to get to ignite, but I do try and put it all the way to the top as I get better standard deviations with more compound. Generally, if you use large magnum rifle primers, you do get better standard deviations. So in my opinion, the more compound in there, the better. After you get all the powder done, what you wanna do is just take it and transfer it into the primer. So what I do is when I'm dumping out the powder, I dump it out to a piece of paper that's small and that I can be, that's already pre-folded. So what I've been using is this kind of paper, which is the inside of an envelope, because as you can see, a residue does get stuck on there. And if you use a regular piece of paper, there's way more residue stuck on there. And even if you use a card to scrape the powder, you do still lose a little bit of residue. When using something like this, the residue still does get stuck on there, but it's not as drastic. So when you're taking apart the primer and you're scrubbing out the compound, you scrub onto a piece of paper like this. And then from this point, it's very easy to put in the primer. So you just hold the primer and then you put the powder on like that. And perhaps you get another piece of paper like this underneath. So if you put it on there and some does spill out, it's on a different piece of paper. So you can grab the residuals and then dump that out as well. And just keep repeating that process until it's full. Once you've got it pretty close to the full lev fullness level, it's very simple, you take the piece of paper, put it in there, and then we wanna reuse the anvil. So I've been reusing the anvil from the Campro large, large Pistol Magnum Primer, and I found I get really good consistency in my groupings and standard deviations when I reuse this primer. It does fit very well inside the large rifle primers, but it does not seal or stay put. So after you do this part, you wanna load it onto a press or a hand primer one by one. You can't just load them all up in a priming system all together because it will come loose and fall apart. After you've done this part right here, just simply load it up and then you're good to go. That's the whole process, it's very easy. If you do not use a donor primer that is a large pistol, you can reuse your old primers from your primers that we're reusing here. I've done that too and the anvil works just fine. If you reuse the anvil from your old uh, primer, and that's pretty much the whole process. So it's getting very cold here in Canada. So I decided to test these out with three powders that are all temperature sensitive. So I've got here 6.5 stable, 4831 shortcut. I use this for 147 ELDMs, but those bullets do not shoot very well out of my bagara no matter what powder I use. And a pro tip, this is the best powder for 6.5 Creedmoor, N160, temperature stable, very, very good powder here. This powder, I call it duplicate because on my chronograph, I just see duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. So I think everybody should try some Vita Vori powder. It's kind of hard to get too, but um, N160 is very good for Creedmoor and some even bigger cartridges. Same velocity as any of the 4350s, but um, yeah, this is the best, best powder for 6.5 Creedmoor in my opinion. Now we'll move on to the footage of testing the groups. So we're starting this off with Winchester. And this is 43, 42.5, N160. And you can see here we got the Pierce primer, so let's see how this does. Oh, that one too. No readings, you gotta be freaking kidding me, dude. Okay, this grass is not a meal though. 
that's not the best view. Solidation. All right, so we'll start off with the data, including the velocities and the standard deviations. That's what I was using right here. So I've not done any load development for these bullets yet. I really use these bullets. And here I'm not really going for accuracy as the brass was three times fired and I didn't anneal it. So I was not expecting much accuracy, but I wanted to focus on what the numbers were and how good the standard deviation was of the reloader primers and compare the velocities to regular primers and magnum primers. So that's the first group right there with my reloaded primers. And you can see the SD is very good over there. And the high is 2656 and the low is 2635. Moving on over to the Federal 210. Uh, these might be matched or they might not be matched. I'm not too sure. I don't think they're matched primers to be honest. Or they could be. I don't know, man. I don't know. But anyway, the low there was about 2583. And the high was 2619. Standard deviation was not that good, but not that bad either at 13.55 and produced the best group out of all of them. And here we have the Magnums and these are CCI 250 and these are 1.0740 and the high was 26.77 and the low is 26.56. So the highest um, had the highest velocities and the lowest standard deviations and that is common when it comes to Magnum primers. With a hotter charge, they do produce a bit better standard deviations. When you compare these numbers onto the primers with the reloader primers, they're very similar. So when you fill up the primer cup with the same amount of powder from the large pistol magnum, and you fill it up close to the top, it does produce more, something closer to a magnum primer. So if you want to reload magnum primers, and you needed a bit more extra oomph to ignite the powder, this will definitely do the trick. And if you reload these into a magnum cup, and you can save your very rare magnum primers for hunting or other applications that you primarily use them for. So me personally, I shot about 40 of these and they've all worked and they've all produced good groups. So something you can do, you know, maybe a couple times a month, you know, after work or something, load up about five primers, 10 primers. And before you know it, you might have 50 primers and that'll be good enough for a range trip. But this whole process is very mentally straining and you have to really focus and, you know, so it's not a very easy process, but it can serve its use cases in certain situations. And obviously, if things go south in the future in an SHTF scenario, and you got no more primers coming your way, very good knowledge to have, you know. So anyway, that concludes the video, guys. I appreciate you so much for watching. Thank you so much. Any questions or concerns, leave them in the comments, and I'll see what I can do. Until then, take care and happy shooting.